So in today's show, I'm gonna go through four steps to help you plan your quarter two. Welcome to the Rise to Thrive show. I am your host, James Borman. And if you are coming through, please do let me know. Please let me know if this helps as well. Just real quick, tomorrow, we are opening up our early bird for the 28 day challenge, which starts on the 1st of May giving away um, like 450 pound worth of bonuses. Okay, for those that are on our priority list. Okay, you can get on the priority list by just clicking the post here or in my bio on Instagram or in the descriptions on YouTube and just putting yourself on that registration. Take a look at the brochure. Okay, we go tomorrow. Midnight is the close of play to get on the priority list. Anyway, let's get back to the four points, guys, that... Um, I want to teach you. Now, for me, planning is simply, um, I'm going to sit here because it's pretty dark. Planning for me is a map. It's a map with reference points that leads you to your treasure. And it gives you direction. It allows you to achieve the things that you feel are successes, are elements of fulfillment, um, Uh, based on your own emotional well-being and mental well-being in connection to the world and and it's about you finding your fulfillment basically so we got to find or draw up the map to get you there because without the plan without the map what you end up doing is just firefighting most days you end up just in this hamster wheel of doom chasing your own tail sprinting around doing everything but nothing so we want to be able to create some consistency some control of our time and our energy and some clarity right So planning your quarters, planning your years, planning your weeks or your days is super important. So the first thing that we need to consider when we're creating our plan for quarter two is realigning, refocusing on what we want to achieve by the end of the year. Now, you may well have set a couple of um, tasks in January. You might have set yourself a year goal. You might have set yourself a quarter one goal. Maybe that's gone out the window with lockdown. Maybe you just lost motivation. Uh, Maybe you just lost the connection of why you wanted to do those things. Maybe you just lost your way. So I think it's really important right here to be able to realign yourself with what you want to achieve at the end of this year in the four pillars, which is health, business, relationships, and personal development. Kind of visualize, visualize yourself, if you like. This is how I work it, like maybe 20 minutes before the clock strikes midnight. And you kind of look back and go, let's go here. You kind of look back and go, oh my God, I'm really pleased I achieved that. So you have to reverse engineer that and figure out what do you have to do today to achieve those milestones. So visualize what that year plan is, where you want to be in each one of those pillars. And the other, the next step, Okay, is then to, step two is to work out what your primary goal is, okay, for this second quarter coming, which for the mastermind, for my group, we're starting on um, uh, Monday, sorry. What is that primary goal? What is that one thing that you have to do this quarter that's going to move you closer to achieving the bigger picture at the end of the year? And the key here is to understand that Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't limit your goal setting to your self-limiting beliefs. Don't compare yourself to other people. Make sure that this is something that's going to move you forwards or give you some clarity or give you some personal satisfaction and fulfillment. And it's just simply simple as choosing that one main task that's going to take you one step closer to achieving what you want to at the end of the year. Now, this is the importance of knowing where you want to be at the end of the year, because if you don't do that, you're just planning the quarter as a completely as a complete byproduct, as a side, as a a side product, if you like, away from the long term mission. And I always believe that when you plan your quarters or you plan your weeks and you plan your days, it's all with the mission in mind for the long term benefits of the direction that you're heading of the things you're trying to achieve it's all relatable if you do a completely separate quarter and it has nothing to do with your future 
although it's good, it's not necessarily relevant. Everything we're trying to achieve is about the bigger picture, is about forward thinking. And that's why it's important that you connect this quarter with what you're trying to achieve. So think about those primary goals. Now, depending on how conditioned you are and how well you practice your plans, depending on where you are at a stage of your life, you can then add other ones like secondary goals or third goals or even bonus goals. And that's what I recommend to my guys in my coaching group is that, listen, if you feel that you can deal with a couple more goals in each pillars, then go for a secondary and a third. For those that have been with me a couple of years, go for the bonus. And then you end up having all of these main sort of goals for the quarter two. Now we've got our plans. We know where we're heading for the year. We know what our primary goals are. We know what our secondary goals are. We know what we, we want to achieve. Now we want to break down the 90 days because 90 days is a long time to go without any reference points. So what we do is break it down into three 28 day periods. So we do checkpoint one, is the first 28 days, checkpoint two is the second 28 days, checkpoint three, okay, and wrap up is the third checkpoint and 90 day outcome. So what we then do is take that 90 day goal and we break it down into three bite-sized missions. And then we have the headings, health, business, relationships, personal development, and we dissect that 90 day plan. So what do I need to do in this first 28 days that's going to make sure that I'm on the right track to achieve in my 90 days. Then we go into the second 28 days. What do I need to do in here to then achieve the 90 day plan? What do I need to do in that last checkpoint, those last 28 days to then break that down? OK, so when we have a plan, it's always about dissecting it. It's always about re-engineering it. It's all about reverse engineering it and bringing it back to manageable periods of time or manageable tasks that we can achieve. If I just set myself that 90 day goal and trying to go all in on that, that's cool. We'll, we'll probably be on it for two, three weeks and then we kind of, it would disappear and we'll be dwelling. So I think what's really important here is, is to understand that if we can break it down into 28 days, you can then break that down into your weekly targets. What do I need to do in these next four weeks? What are my four weekly outcomes that I need to achieve? And then what do I need to do each day? So suddenly you're becoming super accountable for your time and your energy. Uh, you're becoming, uh, you've got consistency and then you've got clarity in the direction that you're doing. You're waking up every single day and knowing what the fuck you've got to do rather than being a cluster fuck. Okay, finally the fourth thing because we're running out of time here. Let me just check here. Yep. Fourth thing is review and reflect. You've got to do a weekly review. A weekly review and audit, I would recommend. Uh, so scoring yourself out of 10, how, how did you plan your week? How, what, what were the wins? What could you learn? What are you taking into next week? And every single week, writing down the 98, the 90 day plan and your 28 day checkpoint plan. So you are connected to it. So it's there every single day. So you remind yourself. That's the importance of having a journal. Every single morning you wake up and you have that affirmation. You look at what you're trying to achieve. You look at your 10-year goal. You look at your year goal, your 90-day goal, your 28-day goal. And it connects you and reminds you about everything that you need to do. All right, guys? I rushed the last bit, little bit there. But if you're going to be successful, you've got to get your fucking shit squared away. There are too many people who are just ignoring it, ignoring themselves, ignoring what needs to be done. And if you don't focus on this type of, this is the stuff that's going to help you lose weight. This is the stuff that's going to help you get fit. This is the stuff that's going to get, make your relationships work. Eating and training is great, but you are shit in your routine. And if you're shit in your routine and you're living a life in chaos and you've got no control, you're not going to be sustainable with it. So you've got to be doing this type of stuff. You've got to become organized. You've got to work on you before then seeing those results in your nutrition and your fitness, guys. This is the fucking start point. All right, guys? And if you need help with this, then that's what the 28-day challenge is all about, making you more uh, in control. Have a good day.